Let's continue on our adventure in the world of being a director. Yeah, so guys, I don't know what's wrong with my recording, but I need to have my head really high up because normally I see that screen, like you see that screen over here. It's perfectly in the front of me. If I would sit, it'd be the same. So you don't see that meter up the top probably most of the time, but I'm gonna try to keep my hand as much on those screens as I can. Fucking hell, I need to explain something, you idiots. Jump it! Oh! Yeah, yeah. First of all, let's get the power on. It's on. You need to get at least the bottom four plugs on. Yeah, they're on. Let's load up the adverts. Oh, yeah, yeah. You might want to have a bit of a think about it. Your decisions have oh. consequences, don't they? Hehehe. <laughs> right, you can see they finally got the old headline system up and working again. And the vision mix is already in headline mode because... Headlines always come at a start. It's really simple, mate. These two buttons at the bottom of the vision mixer, you can see they now have A and B on them. Yeah. And they're to help you pick image A on the left bottom screen here, or image B on the right bottom screen here. It's really simple. This little clock here will count down the number of seconds you have to make your decision. Now you're in auto headline mode, so mm -hmm. if you don't bother to pick a photo before that clock runs out, the machine's just going to pick one at random for you. Okay. I just want to say one more thing, mate. The pictures you choose to show of these people, well, that's how the public is going to perceive them, and that's going to affect their lives. So like with the adverts, choose carefully. And we're off. Good luck, mate. If I get to I'll call you back in the next break. You know, yeah, I'm coming, darling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't get one of those. My friend Janet says theirs gets really hot. Is this Janet who thinks dogs have their own secret language? Yeah, the one that mistrusts the moon. Ten seconds, everybody! Not the best source of consumer advice, then. Mm, Don't blame me when it explodes. Okay. Going in five, four, three, two, one. Good evening, I'm Jeremy Dalton. Our main headlines tonight. Destination unknown. At the end of Advance's first full week in office, we ask exactly who's leading this chart. Tonight, I'll be discussing what the new future might hold with a leading yeah, economist and radical free thinker, with the country's wealth creators in a state of panic and unfavorable rumblings already heard from overseas. I'll be asking my guests whether Advance can deliver on even a fraction of their manifesto promises. Huh? Out with the old. Remington's Fist have appointed Sophia Remington as their new CEO. The following photo, <laughs> taken from our archive, gives us a sense of this influential young firebrand who, at the tender age of 23, becomes the youngest female CEO in history. I think I would like to Sophia fuck up Remington everything. Has always impressed. In the next place or something. I wonder what's gonna happen then. Graduated with the highest honors, immediately being asked back to lecture. The markets have responded favorably. <laughs> the stocks rise. Yeah, okay, that's boring. In her first press conference this afternoon, Sophia announced a children's toy named Mr. Snugglehugs. That's a nice Sophia nice promises it will be all the rage this Christmas, but concerns have been raised about the product's safety. Making a splash. Intrepid scientist Dr. David Wong and marine biologist Ingrid Swarsborg and Horgensford have today set off to explore Dante's taint. The recently discovered cave system was previously thought unreachable, <laughs> but thanks to a new breakthrough in underwater flood technology, the pair hope to successfully reach the imposing <laughs> central cavern and the undiscovered plant species it contains. This is, of course, successful expeditions Oops. for this unlikely <laughs> parent. In a joint statement about the dangers their team might face, the pair stated, we will face the plentiful challenges together like we always have. Playing the field, Rumours abound as sporting legend Johnny Hamsleeves is snapped with a <laughs> push by the capital's hottest clubs. 
the footballer was caught while out celebrating being named Sports Personality of the Year, <laughs> as reported by this very person. <laughs> Johnny is seen here with socialite and performance artist Tiffany Lamour, whose recent show Snatched Inside... inside Why aren't you to be nice? It should be an asshole. It'd be more Couldn't fun. be on the cards for these two <sighs> And Grievous Bodily Charm. With advance promising a radical new position on crime, how afraid should <laughs> what we the fuck are those like gangster boys? <laughs> going live around the country to Funny tell boys. people seen the criminal justice Funny system boys. from every perspective. With more and more powers passing to the police and less and less oversight, are we using an advanced shaped sledgehammer to crack a nut? All that and mega wolf with a group of young actors who are already experiencing the positive side of the new Assets and Wealth Act firsthand. They'll be talking and performing later. That's all Four, coming up on three, two, one. Yeah, I'm good at my job. I'm fucking good at my job. Yeah. Yeah. Eh. I'm gonna try to it. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Come on. And get it small. Small. Two. In the uh. wake of the government's swift enactment of the Assets and Wealth Act, we're talking about Advance's first week in office and what the new future holds. Joining me are Katie Brightman, a leading economist, and Alan James, author of Alan James is Right, The Free Man's Guide to Waking Up. Alan, the government certainly haven't dragged their heels on delivering some of the legislation <laughs> they promised. But what does the Wealth Act mean for us? Nothing, Jeremy. We're still vassal slaves. We're just in prettier cages. A confident dismissal there. Katie Brightman, do you agree? I'm afraid I don't. <laughs> I think that Advance have realised that the current economic system of unlimited, unending growth is untenable. Yeah, so yeah, we're changing things up. There I agree with you. They're moving to the next steps in the grand plan. Grand plan, Alan. <laughs> it's all in my book. Alan James is right, Jeremy. <laughs> we're to become the great herd. Ignorant, sterile, and short-lived. That's what they want. Or perhaps Advance have just realised that if we carry on the Look way we that. are, really we will destroy job. ourselves and this and that planet book. in a mad That's orgy of consumption. Book. If you'll excuse the colourful metaphor. <laughs> yes, orgy is the right word. Only it'll be the overlords having an orgy on our poor broken backs. It's all oof, in my oof, book. Oof. Alan James is... Shamelessly self-promoting? Katie, how do you respond to this new approach? I think they're watching carefully. Advance of the most disruptive threat <laughs> to the since the last great war. Yes, Katie's right. War is inevitable. Thank you, but that isn't what's And this will not be a war like we've ever seen before. We're talking huh. millions of deaths. Huh. We're talking high-tech weapons that can level entire cities. We're talking... Out of the wrong orifices? Mock me all you like, Jeremy. But when they murder your parents and they poison your food and they take you away to their camps for <laughs> hypno-brainwashing, we'll be laughing then. That might be a great way to sell books, Alan, but you know full well that isn't going to happen in a democracy. Democracy is dead. Yes, advance are radical, and change is always frightening, <laughs> but the truth is that the Wealth and Assets Act has made more than 90% of the population wealthier and is on target to produce a permanent end to poverty. Bollocks! Oh, oh, bollocks. What this young lady doesn't understand, Jeremy, is that these are the maybe same people. Jeremy, that that these are maybe the they've rebranded, Okay, I need to circus act to keep us from seeing the tyrants. Good dad, uh, like no That's swearing. Wrong, Alan. For a start, they've mobilised the youth vote like we've never seen before. You say mobilise, I call it grooming. The Grooming of an entire generation to walk happily into a hmm? bondage. Is it? Hey. But based on the facts, Katie, what are your positions? <laughs> the Assets and Wealth Act is only the first step. Advance now have a historic budgetary He's surplus. Like, my book, my book. Services. They're already <laughs> They're already funneling unprecedented amounts into scientific mm -hmm. research and the arts. Or, as I call them in I my know. book, another book. Science and OP arts. Like opiates. Uh. Can we get back to the issue at hand, please, Alan? This is the issue. It's all coming from the water, the chemicals. They're pumping it full of belief juice. Don't get me wrong. I want to see these changes, but only if they're sustainable. If Advance lose their power after spending half of our GDP on... Look at his face! That could be catastrophic. <laughs> the catastrophe is that they're succeeding. They've got us sat here talking about their puppet show. All right, we're running out of time. Quickly, Alan, um, what does the future look like to you? 
a bleak space where we've all been figuratively sodomized <laughs> into submission. <laughs> oh, of course. Katie? We might be on the eve of a brave oh, new world. Sorry. God knows we need some change. Why are you getting down? Let's walk forwards with our eyes open. Two very different visions of the future there. Alan James, Katie Brightman, thank you for joining me. When we come back, I'll be investigating law and order before <laughs> Megan gets <laughs> some beneficiaries <laughs> of the Assets and Wealth Act. That's all coming up tonight on the National Nightly News. One minute back. You know, I think they might do some good. I hope so too, Jeremy. How much are you being paid? Kids. We love them. And they just love Mr. Yay! Yay! Give your human-like voice to keep them company when you can't. If you keep me happy, I'll keep you safe. And his incredible oh. real action. <laughs> oh, I want to watch that! Shush! Welcome back. In our second segment, state of we're going to be taking a deep country. dive with the state of Advance have already tasked what they are calling a Advance solutions team to move this serious social problem to the top of the list. Tonight, we go behind the headlines to meet the people who live with the criminal justice system every day of their lives. First up, we have Gregory Judge, a lawyer who sees the problems close up on the front line. Let's go. Can you hear me, Gregory? Can yes, I've got you, Jeremy. Thanks for having yes, me. What's it like on the front line of the hard face of the cold hand of justice? Uh, well, as you can imagine, Jeremy, we are massively understaffed in this country. Uh, we're working every hour we can just to try and cope with the caseloads on our desks. Which must affect the quality of support you can offer. Well, we can barely keep up with demand, Jeremy. <laughs> there just simply isn't enough things done is... at a systemic level to relieve the problems. <laughs> we need more support from ministers. We what are you doing? Oh, we need change at a structural I'm level, Jeremy. I'm leaving, Greg. Not a good time, darling. It never is, is it? I'll be at my mother's. It never is, is it? Just hang on. Just hang on. No, the, the problem isn't a local one, Jeremy. It's nationwide. Just give me five minutes. I'm talking to Jeremy Thompson. Oh, have you mentioned your affairs? No. <laughs> well, uh, the affairs of the Justice Department that we should be concerned about. Hello, Mr. Donaldson. Hello, Mrs. Judge. We need uh, <laughs> we need legislation to relieve the pressure on our public. Sorry servants. to interrupt the news, Mr. Donaldson. Can I have a moment to tell my husband I'm leaving? Can I have a moment to yes, I uh, totally understand. Yes. Quite the picture of a burdened legal sector there, the Gregory Judge. Thank you for joining us. Gregory Judge. Thank Next, I'm joined by Police Chief Constable Next Bob Peel, a man with a very different perspective on our nation. Fuck, I don't know what it's so bad. Do you think there's a problem with the system, Bob? Oh, I'm sure we all do, Jeremy. I'm sure we all long for a return to the days when you could <laughs> safely walk the streets of your community at night, looking in through windows and generally enjoying your neighbours without the risk of being terrorised by some thug with a knife. Uh, or kosh. So you feel the streets simply aren't safe anymore? Where have we gone wrong, Bob? Well, that's not a simple question, Jeremy, but I think it all comes down to moral decay. Now, this guy's gonna come here to that room. I lost touch with what it means to be a citizen of this once great country. Also, as the vicar noted in Sunday, I tried to get like two both shots just to be like on a meter. And to what do you attribute this moral decay? Foreigners, gays, and gypsies mainly. It's all in the Bible. Look, Leviticus clearly states that. What the? Bugger, hang on a moment. Jeremy, your bloody gimps escaped. Delia? Delia, can you give me a little help, please, dear? <laughs> uh, as I was saying, Jesus didn't like immigrants much, did he? And just to be clear, you think it's the immigrants who are responsible for the moral decay? Absolutely, Jeremy. Uh, back in your box, Clive. Back in your box. Delia, I really could use a little help with this. I'm oh, sorry, darling. I'm staying the badgers. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Jeremy Donaldson. Clive, could you put him back oh, in the box? Clive, you know it's Wednesday. Back in, back in your gimmick space. Uh, Whose responsibility is it to make a change, Bob? Well, it is certainly not the responsibility of the decent, good, white people. Darling, where's the padlock? Oh, hold on just a moment. Oh, Clive! <laughs> <laughs> Clive, I am not having this again. 
As I was saying, Jeremy, moral decay. Crime is the responsibility of the criminal, no one else. It's going to be the news. I don't even need to do that with the fucking dab. Look, when our daughter Alice comes home with an A minus, does she go on a killing spree? No, she takes three of her pills and hides under the stairs like a normal child. Thank you, Bob. Bob Peel there. We're locking down the police's position on morality for it. And finally tonight, hopefully uninterrupted, it's time to get to the heart of the matter. Tony no. Dawson has recently been released from prison after serving three years for aggravated assault. I have a pretty much going to be happening over here. He's agreed to talk to us today, which is also, I believe, his birthday. Many happy returns, Tony. Many happy Cheers, returns, Jez. Tony. Call me titwank, Tony. Everybody else does. No, I'm not going to be doing that. Can you tell us what it's like in prison, Tony? Titwank, Tony. Hey! Prison's a mixed bag. Structure's quite nice, but... It's a constant battle against institutionalization, as you can imagine. And obviously, titwanks are quite hard to come by. I'm picking up that you're not alone there, Tony. Titwank, Tony. <laughs> yeah, sorry, my friends are throwing me a surprise party. Good bunch of lads. OK, well, we're trying to let you get back to that party as soon as possible. Yeah. First, let me ask you this. Do you feel that your time spent in prison helped to rehabilitate you in any way, Tony? Titwank, Tony. I don't think it's as easy as that, Jez. Yeah, I think asking that is an oversimplification. It sounds like it's getting quite busy here, <laughs> Tony, but uh, let's try and soldier on. Since leaving custody, have you been able to find a new job? Yeah, all the boys are here. Big Chris. Oi, oi. Little Chris. <laughs> oi, oi. And Vampire Chris. <laughs> vampire Chris! <laughs> oh, no. One sec, love. Shit, when Tony's on the news. One sec, love. Rehabilitation's difficult with the current system, Jez. It's just not set up for it, you know? He's like, is it going to be any worse? So, oh, clown! To... I'm sorry, who's this clown? You are joking. Chrissy Freebollock's only got Mr. Fancy, oh? Tony got Mr. Fancy. Uh, uh, not now, fellas, I'm on the news. It's so... <laughs> It seems like we've caught you at a bad time. <laughs> the little boy. Oh, I can't really hear you, mate. It's getting a bit busy here. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, we uh, Jesus. seem to be losing the signal no here, Tony. No fucking way, lad. Believe that. Believe that. Well, we're just trying to get that signal back. <laughs> I think we... <laughs> yes, Tony. Tony, I mean, we're literally away for two seconds. Hey! How has this happened, Tony? <laughs> 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 Our train of thought, though, a little. Hopefully, you, the viewer at home, have managed to gain a broader understanding of the serious and complex issues around law and order. After the break, Megan will be live with some plucky young thespians. Don't go away. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back, everybody. Well, well, I'm not going long enough, quite drunk. It's been a great night in this next section. There's a bit <laughs> of music. Why is that a great mate? What the fuck is music, there? You can see the result on the vision mixer, and the public will <laughs> love that. Don't worry if you don't know, you won't get punished for it or nothing. Just try and stay in the groove. Also, one last tip when the music starts, turn down the broadcast volume. Right, enjoy the music bit. The broadcast volume? Music. Why? I'm so pissed. I think I might go and throw up in a bit. Sure, he's on his way. Come on, welcome back. How hard can it be? This is on you. Ten seconds, everybody. Okay, we're sent to Megan, camera two. Going in five. Okay, four, no. Three. Welcomes Black. I'm Megan Wolf. And Welcome's on tonight's culture spot, I'll be chatting with one of the first beneficiaries of the Assets and Wealth Act, a team of inspiring young people from Scritchford Sick Form College who today received a grant from Advance to take their play, Hey, Friendship, on a tour of local secondary schools. Welcome to you all. Well, let's start with you two, Harriet and Charlotte Winstanley Dash Hamilton. Girls, you must be thrilled. We are, Megan. We're overwhelmed, to be honest. <laughs> and I believe you two are sisters, is that right? Yes, Charlotte's my oldest. I'm the older, more popular one. <laughs> 
and the Jokies. The Harriet and Trey were really the ones who came up with the whole idea. Yeah. So, Harry and I were oh shooting my. the breeze in the cafeteria, and I said, hey, uh. let's actually do something. So I went to look for a drama teacher. Uh, but she'd been laid off due to budget cuts. Fortunately, I directed a pantomime when I was at university, so, so I knew the ropes, as it were. Oh, right, yes, but you're the maths teacher, aren't you? Uh, yes, that's me, Jeff Algebra, <laughs> maths teacher. Maths is really important. Oh, thanks, Steve. Yeah. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, Steve. As is theatre. <laughs> it's one of the oldest art forms in history, Aristotle. Made. I just think that when we travel around all these problem schools and the poor kids see us, they say, hey, I really Aww. want to be like those attractive kids. Really and that's a very like beautiful and powerful thing. <laughs> we touch our audiences and they touch us right back. I suppose with a surname like Algebra, there was really only one choice of career for me. <laughs> My wife, Angela, and I, we often laugh about it. <laughs> Angela Algebra. <laughs> yes. We just want to bring a bit of song and joy into people's lives. Oh my God. About the difficult issues. The issues in the play are what really matter. And I think you're going to be showing us an extract from this play, aren't you? That's right. To put into context, oh, no. I play a young first year who's having some troubles at school. Her character doesn't actually have a name, yeah? Because in a way, she's like all of us. It's like a metaphor. Maybe she's you at home, or like, maybe she's you, Megan. Maths is really important. Yeah, thanks, fuck? Steve. <laughs> Put it in, coach. Yes, thanks, Steve. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to have What's wrong with that last guy? You run off and is get he a ready. cyborg? Wait to see Look it. at him! <laughs> That's it, that way. <clears throat> uh, so, Jeff, oh. when did you first hear about the grants? Uh, two days ago. A letter from advance arrived at the school. Oh, the headmaster thought it was all a prank, but his secretary retrieved it from his bin and brought it to me. How? How did you react? Oh my god, I, I need to look out now what I'm doing. But then Harriet and Trey rescued it and uh, they, they, they rang the number at the bottom of the page and next thing you know, we're on tour. Wow. Well, I think we can all guess which way you'll be voting from now on. I think that's going to be you awful. Know it's funny because Angela and I don't usually vote. We, we're not very political. I'm a mathematician, of course, and she's a paraplegic mainly but we did used to watch that peter clements diy show back in the day and so we thought uh, why not let's have a go with this old democracy thing okay and here we bally well are <laughs> good stuff fucking brilliant so let's have a look at a short section of hey friendship hey 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 dear diary I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. I'm not sure I can take another day at this school. Another day of tears. Tears. Another day of fears. But still, I walk the corridors alone. Alone. Dreading what might be around every corner. What's around the corner? What's around the corner? What's around the corner? Oh, hi, Gary. Oh, heavens, no! It's Gary the Fist! Gary the Fist! What the fuck? Uh, going somewhere, little first year? Great. I've been looking for some poor victim to bully all morning. But will this make me feel better about my violent father? Violent father. Excuse me. I'm late for maths. It's my favourite subject. Oh, my and God. And so important. Uh, maths is for losers. What? Maths is for losers. My arm's stuck, coach. Keep going, for fuck's sake. <laughs> right, uh, uh, maths is for losers. Now, give me your lunch money. Double lunch for me today, but why am I only truly happy when I'm eating? Not today, Gary what the, the Fist. What the fudge? What do you mean, not today? Who are you? My arm's free, coach. Brilliant, keep going. <laughs> right, uh, uh, who are you to stand up to me? I, Gary the Fist. And you're just a sad little girl with two gay dads who's all alone. That's where you're wrong, Gary the Fist. These are my two new friends. Vanessa is captain of the netball team. Yeah. Yeah. And Blake owns a motorbike. Yeah. yeah. What? But, but, I can't fight all three of you. And I don't have any friends of my own. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, no. What? <laughs>
Take a look at me. Take a look at me. What the fuck is that? I could be you. She could be you. And you could be me. Oh, you could be me. Life can be cheeky. I don't know what that means. Time is eight. It's my choice to be made. Yes. Make a different choice. I don't know what I'm doing here. Hey, listen up. I won't take no crap. Who said middle class girls can't rap? I want to eat. What the fuck? Hey, kids, I'm Gary the Fist. People think the folks like me probably shouldn't exist. But that's just prejudice, and I do do it. Do it. I became Gary the Fist. I grew up on a council estate. The park was hip, but the flats weren't great. My dad used to come home drunk and late, and he'd hit my mum for dinner. He had to wait. Oh, cool. where's my dinner? It's not ready. It's not ready. Where's my dinner, woman? Don't, Don't make me ask you again. Hitting women is wrong. It depends. No, okay, that was a joke. It was a bad joke. It doesn't depend. It's bad. Okay, it's, it, it's bad. Life's pretty hard on a council estate. Life's pretty hard on a council estate. Life's pretty hard on a council estate. Can we end that? It's really painful. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. I'm not surprised that was his face. I need to do that. He's depressed. Look at his face. He's depressed. It's my choice. <laughs> so stop now. Make a different choice. Listen to that inner voice. Friendship. Yes. <laughs> well, thankfully that's all we have time for tonight on the National Monthly <laughs> News. Join us tomorrow night for all the headlines from across the country. My name is Jeremy Dalton. Have a peaceful night. And we're out. The whole the what? what the literal fuck was that? <laughs> I believe that was art. I believe I've got a 14 inch cock, but it doesn't make it so. I have a similar belief about an adequate paycheck. Friendship! Oh, oh, someone please get these twats out of my studio. <laughs> <sighs> that was brilliant. I love my job. <laughs>